What's up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the LWG Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Danny, a.k.a. Lord Disco, accompanied by Eslam, Ra, God of the Sun, and Dan, Papa Sun Killer. Make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications below, and don't forget to check out all the other awesome content. LWG. <laughs> Henry Cavill is my Superman. I just want to drop that out real I quick. I hate Henry so much. I-, <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, I hate Henry so much. Henry Cavill is my Superman. Yeah. And Henry the Killer Fox is yeah. my number one fan. Yeah. And I love you, Henry. Yeah. Um, he gets it. <laughs> Henry understands why I'm upset. Yeah. Um, but in other... In <laughs> um, so after Batman... After I saw the Batman, uh, my girl and I went to Buffalo Wild Wings because I wanted to try the new flavor of Mountain Dew, which is exclusive to them. Kind of like uh, how uh, Baja, Baja Blast, Blast is exclusive to Taco Bell. So I was like, all right, let's go because I want to try it. So I went, <clears throat> I got it, I tried it. It's Pepsi Blue. Mm. It's Mountain Dew Pepsi Blue. That's what mm-hmm. it is. That's what the mm-hmm. flavor is like. I was like, as soon as I saw it, it was like a dark blue color. I was like, oh, I wonder what this is going to taste like. It feels like Pepsi Blue. And then as soon as I took a sip, I was like, oh, this is Pepsi Blue. And I was telling her, and she had no idea what the hell I was talking about. And I was like, get your life together. Pepsi I guess like, I have I to like get Pepsi. my life together. I've never heard of Pepsi Blue. Pepsi Blue was uh, amazing back in the day. You wild. My life is in shambles. I don't think <laughs> to be <wild> together. <laughs> <laughs> my life is in shambles. We got to have an intervention for Dan. <laughs> Oh man, no, I, I've, I've, I've been I've been just stuck on Baja Blast, man. I can't I can't get off it. I don't know about Pepsi Blue. But l- listen, bro, if Baja Blast was Coke, I'd be hooked. I'd be hooked on Coke. Oh, it's, not Coca Cola. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no, no, like <laughs> that's like what the, I that's what I understood. The that's sugar what I was like, I, I need some Baja, man. <laughs> the sugar booger. Um, I'm trying to feel the blast. <laughs> or is it booger sugar? I think it's booger sugar. Not yeah, sugar, sugar. Booger sugar. Yeah, it's, it's sugar, sugar booger. It's booger sugar. It's, I think it's either one, to be honest. Hang on now. No. <laughs> it's booger, booger sugar. Booger sugar. That, booger that's sugar. how much we know about drugs, guys. <laughs> We're so late. <laughs> <laughs> I've I've done a cocaine once. <laughs> guys, sir, could I buy one cocaine? <laughs> <laughs> like, why are you giving me flour in a bag? <laughs> um, Gotta bake it. <laughs> That's how you get baked, too. <laughs> <laughs> also, another very lame thing that I'm really excited about. I bought a water pitcher with a filter. It just came in today. Nice. Loving it. Loving Damn. it. Get my water filtered. I'm, my I'm water not. clean. And it came with, like, a little tester to, like, test mm-hmm. the water. So I'm running around like an idiot going to all my faucets. Like, ooh, is, oh, that's some dirty water. <laughs> oh, this water is even more dirty. <laughs> oh, this ain't alkaline. I ain't <laughs> drinking it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's I, I use up way too many um, plastic bottles, and it's like I'm single handedly destroying this planet. So let me let me do this. Um, this way, oh, I don't yeah, have to buy I bottle don't. water. Yeah, yeah you guys, you guys have the big things. I don't have that. Yeah. You're yeah, killing get, the seagulls. Get a yeah. blender bottle, man. It's the, it's yeah. insulated. You put a little ice. You... Double insulated. I mean, I'm, I'm, and then I'm, you I'm, that that feels like something where it's more on the go. <laughs> Oh, um, uh, this is I use it at home. I use it for everything, to be yeah. honest. This, I only use this one cup. Like it's this <laughs> this one's fucking heavy too, so I'm not taking this shit on the go. With yeah, me. I mean, I've I just never... I just do the I just put it in a cup. Yeah, put it in a cup, and I'm good. And it's also not a solo cup. It's just it's designed to look like it. It's a plastic. Oh, okay. cup. Regular oh, wow, plastic. it looks like a party cup. I know it does, but this is just regular solid cup. Like Dan, Dan, just it. tell him you're drinking, bro. Just tell him you're drinking. Be cool. Be cool. <laughs> Ooh, that, that goes late. well with the cocaine I bought. <laughs> <laughs> Pinky up, my friend. <laughs> oh, oh shit! Um, yeah, let's uh, let's jump into what you've been playing this week. <laughs> One hell of a segue. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> can't uh, beat the Baja Blast, man. I just want to finish off with that. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been. Uh, I literally had an hour and a half yesterday to play. Um, Horizon Zero Dawn. There it is. You got it. That's all I had. That's all, right. all I had. An hour and a half. Uh, finished uh, the second half of a mission that I had started two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then that was it. 
<laughs> that's, that's all I was able to get. I just uh, I want to point something out. So, for for those of you who don't know, when um when when I'm working on like the YouTube thing and I'm putting in the description for the Games Club uh, Weekly that we do, where you just go yeah. check out the Los Wise Guys podcast uh, on uh, check out the Los Wise Guys YouTube channel. And every time I do it, it's just like we play the same games, and I'm having a very difficult time typing in the same thing. <laughs> yeah, or it's yeah. just like this week. Eslam played Horizon Zero Dawn and progressed. <laughs> and it's Again, like, we all do. It. We all do. It. It's yeah. like Danny is like, and I was just like, Danny talks about vampire and the, the conversations of vampire. And me, it's just like for the longest time, I was playing Horizon Forbidden West, and I was just like, yeah. uh, it's gone to the point where I'm just literally picking up random games. Like I have to have a different game. I have to have a different <laughs> game every week. <laughs> That's how it's, I feel, and I've so actually hard. had a pretty eventful week this week. Nice. Really. Well, I just want to say I'm in second place, bitches. Um, the LWGFEGL put up some points with Tunic and lost my negative one point again. Let's go, Martha's <laughs> that Dead. That thing just keeps dipping. <laughs> it dips <laughs> and comes back up. Let's go, Martha's Dead. Give me 71 so I can get one point off of you. God, I hope so. I need He's some... just praying for that one. Watch Dude. him w- win by one. <laughs> Dude, I'm because if Martha Dead gives me one point, I'm mm-hmm. I'm the winner in my heart. People's <laughs> champ. People's <laughs> champ. Just that, just because of that one game. Yeah, yeah. Yep. God Henry out it, here with know? negative seventeen. Sorry to throw you under the bus, Henry, but i did it to you all last year this is your yeah, turn yeah. this is your chance <laughs> this is sorry Henry, but, dude i gotta that sounds I gotta like i'm the... finally not in last place <laughs> yeah oh my oh, goodness man. have you guys looked at trying uh to do any trades yet have you, have I, you... I i oh i offered you my trade are, are you accepting like what's happening oh hell no no, <laughs> no so my trade was i offered to danny when he told us <laughs> trades were uh available I was like, give me uh, Elden Ring, and I'll give you naming rights for my firstborn. <laughs> <laughs> I completely forgot about that. Until, like, just yeah. now, too. Oh, so my God. you don't want to name my firstborn? I, I'm happy with Elden Ring. Um, Damn, bro. Can, can I name your child The Matrix is Overrated? Can I, can I do that? It's a long <laughs> Are you going to give me Elden Ring? No. <laughs> just, just let me do no, that. No. <laughs> no, I just can't do that for free. Come on, bro. Matrix I mean, is overrated. Clean your fucking room. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll name his. I'll make the middle name. And oh, it's Matrix like, is actually overrated. Matrix, the first Matrix is all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, th- th- his name is Mio. Perfect. Cool. Yeah, Perfect. Look at that. Mio. Mio. Matrix is overrated. Let's go. <laughs> Mio. Now give me Elden Ring. <laughs> You're not kidding. <laughs> I'm dying with Elden Ring. <laughs> All right, but uh, uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. That's it. Do anything in particular within the game that happened? Or? Um, I I was doing that storyline where I was getting that dude's sister. Um, we <laughs> Aaron? found her. Aaron's yeah. sister. Yeah, we found her. She died. Um, Spoilers and, for a game from five years ago. <laughs> yep, she died, guys. <laughs> and uh, I returned to the uh, to the to the place, the sun place. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and and yeah, that's it. I was just like, all right, I, I'm done. I gotta go do just some the work. The one mission. I was like, all right, it was had a great time this week, guys. Yep. And then <laughs> I had to go do some work. Oh, uh, so it is what it is. Uh, I'll, hopefully, I'll have more time to play after the engagement party. But uh, who knows? We'll see. We <laughs> shall you, see. Danny. Me, uh, like I said, I had a pretty eventful week this week. Uh, I uh, I beat vampire. There you go. I'm proud of myself. There it is. I'm proud of myself. Wait to type that in. In typical (laughs) vampire fashion, it finished with an abundance of talking. And uh, spoilers, I found out that the main character was turned into a vampire by a puddle of blood. And I was turned into a puddle of blood to fight his mommy, who was the queen vampire puddle of blood. (laughs) Which makes total sense if you play the game. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) I'm so confused. Uh, yeah, me too. It's like a puddle of blood that takes the shape of a person, but it's oh, just okay. a puddle of blood. I thought you were gonna say like spoilers. He wasn't a vampire. Like <laughs> <laughs> he's on drugs. He's on cocaine. He's on, he took the cocaine. The, the game uh, ended him tweaking in an alley. 
No, so I didn't even get to beat the queen. I just beat her up enough to make her go back to sleep. And then and then the puddle of blood that turned me this was the son of the queen. And he was just like, good job. I knew you could do it. And then uh, like, it was, that was it. And he just went off and did his own thing. <laughs> and, and then other stuff happened. Uh, it turns out uh, England's greatest knight was a vampire. <laughs> nice. And... Uh, yeah, so it was, and uh, there was a the leader of the vampire, the English Vampire Club, the Ascalon Club. Mm. Uh, apparently, he had like dirty blood, and that was like a big secret. And uh, so he like kind of. What do you mean by dirty blood? He was creating skulls, which are like the mindless vampires. Okay. Or some of them are mindless. Most of them are mindless. Uh, so he had like dirty blood, and that was like a big secret. Nobody wanted to reveal. Um, it was a lot of like gossip, and it was okay. It was okay. Did, did you f- end up doing the thing with the like the um, the no kill route? You did, you did that the entire way. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I, I did get that. Uh, it was. Uh, I don't know if it was worth it. it was, actually, <laughs> I didn't really see the other endings, but it, it was an okay ending. It was just what, a lot. What of... would you rate this game? A scale of one to ten. <clears throat> one to five. Make it interesting. One to five. One to five. I'm allowing half points. I'm coming up with the rules as I speak. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm say, allowing quarter points. Okay, there's quarters. There's quarters. <laughs> Out of five, maybe... I'll say a four. It, it was fun for what it was. but it Would you like definitely... to take advantage of the decimal, sir? <laughs> uh, three and three quarters? <laughs> four is fine. <laughs> Just if fourth. anything, th- 3.8 to four. That's, that's okay. the range I'm giving. Okay. A little leeway. Three, I, 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 3.75. <laughs> no, no, sir. If we can come up with rules, so can Danny. It's a three point eight. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Like I, yeah. I counter his three point eight to <laughs> three point seven five. You haven't played the game. <laughs> he's you like, can't have an opinion. He's like, I know your opinion more better than you. Better than you know yourself. <laughs> I, I give it a three point seven five. You know what I'm saying? Nah, what was that? Yeah. What was that voice? My <laughs> 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 games. Uh, but anyway i could beat that i had an eventful week i also played breath of the wild for a little bit and uh i beat myself a line out this week good job my first one and uh it killed me maybe like 37 times before i could beat it but (laughs) i finally got that strategy down like that's what i was saying and then also i i found my groove after i killed it uh i killed the red one in case anybody was wondering nice nice. um there's a gold one at at some point yeah Yeah. i saw i would look crazy but the red one looks so mean. I took a little screen cap of that. He's got this mean mug. He's red. He's just like, I'm a centaur, bitch. And I'm just like, oh, shit. Scary. Oh, centaur side. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, he's like a centaur lion, too. It's no, crazy. for real. He looks, he looks vicious. And then when he comes at you, he just looks even crazier. Uh, what annoyed me about the lionels is they don't miss when they shoot their arrows. It's mm. it's the fucking word. They just shoot them in the air, and the arrow's just like homing. Like, they hit you wherever you go. Yeah, they don't true? miss. So you yeah, like can't I'm, hide behind something, or nope, they'll find you because they don't shoot at you. They shoot up in the air, and it just and then like the arrows yeah. just f- and then they just find yeah. you. Because I, I tried, like th- I feel like I the red one didn't do that that much. I tried different strategies, and I was just, just like trying to fucking like kill it from far away, just bunch of arrows, mm-hmm. and it would just be like f- three arrows at a time, and you're just like. F- <laughs> Always, I try to hide behind something. It's funny you say this, and I feel like Danny's like, no, I just dodged it. Yeah, I, that's honestly how I feel. I was like, I just sidestep. Maybe it's a specific Lionel that does it, but like, there. It that's was what just I was thinking because the red one's supposed to be the weakest. So maybe okay. uh, when you get to the higher ones, they start. Yeah. Maybe also your fighting style. I was kind of like mid range. I was like using a shield, and I was doing a weird mm. thing where I was like, I feel like I was jumping with the shield sideways and blocking mid air and then landing. It was so weird. I, I don't know if that really happened because the camera, and I was just like. <clears throat> Playing like, oh. it's funny. My fighting range is either like far away or really up close. Hmm. Like I don't do well, mid range. Like matches... I'm either sniping or I'm I'm in close, just like fucking brawling. <laughs> yeah, uh, he matches your play style. So if you play long range, that's probably why he got you got all those arrows. Yeah. I was mostly mid range, just trying to like sidestep him and hop like to the side, and just dodge. Yeah, him. that's that's the best way to fight the Lionels, honestly. So, I don't so even know I, if I can I, do it anymore. But and it's funny because I remember you talking about the mighty bananas, and you were yeah. like, 
bitch, why aren't you using Mighty Bananas? And I was like, because I can't find them. And <laughs> I finally found, like, that patch, and I got, like, 54 Mighty Bananas I got to whip up. I got, like, yeah, yeah. like plantains. I got the platanos to whip up. I'm like, you know what's one thing about Breath of the Wild? They don't tell you how to cook. I swear. I had to Google that shit. That's one no, thing yeah. about Breath of the Wild. I was kind of yeah. like. Well, you're so, such the whole a, thing is you're supposed to get a feel for it. Such yeah. an important aspect of the game. And they're just like, figure it out. Figure it out. You got it. Buddy. Yeah. It, well, it's in, <laughs> honestly, it's in the name of the foods. Like anything that's hearty will just give you more more hearts. And mm-hmm. like things that are mighty or whatever are going to give you more um, like battle strength. Yeah. So. No, but I'm talking about just to even cook in general. I never, like, I had to Google it. I like, think there was to... a tutorial in the beginning. Was there? Yeah, because I, I remember that, but... I cooked, like, from the very beginning. Oh, yeah, I think oh, there was a tutorial. so in the cool. We're out here just chefs, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't even know. Chef of the wild. Like... You, you get it? Huh? Huh? Chefs of the wild. <laughs> yeah. How do you, how yeah. Maybe that's Breath of the Wild, too. Yeah. Oh, God, and then, uh, <laughs> and then, so after that, I kind of only played Breath of the Wild for, like, a day. And then I, I'm also in New Jersey, so... I was like, you know what? Let me start a new title. I was like, kind of itching for something new, and uh, I landed on Dying Light, uh, of course, on Switch. That's the only system I play. I'm portable. I'm like a port baby. Is that the um, new one, Dying Light Two, or the first one? It, it's the first one. Okay. Um, but apparent, apparently, I read somewhere that Dying Light Two is coming to Switch, but uh, Cloud. Uh, I don't know how mm. I feel about that, but mm. I kind of do uh, want to play it because this game swept me by my feet. I. I love zombie games. I already have World War Z. I, I haven't been able to finish it. I feel like that one's more team orientated, and this one is more like a single player first person shooter. And uh, I I just fell in love with it because it's like a parkour like gameplay. It's a, and also you you you're crafting weapons and you got like electro weapons, fire weapons, bows, and you're building all this stuff like uh, kind of like Left for Dead or yep. no, what's that one game where you could like, um, build zomb- Zombie Island. I don't know if you ever played that so, one. But some, it, something like that. Yeah. Uh, but I'm like, I, I literally, for the past two days, I've just been playing. I've probably put like 20 hours and like, I just keep playing. I can't put yeah. it down. And uh, it's, it's really cool because um, <clears throat> I really like their night mode. They <laughs> they give you missions sometimes at night and at night, everything like, gets harder, crazy. Yep. harder zombies come out and it gets darker and, uh, it, it, I find myself really at the edge of my seat, like just like oh shit, <laughs> like I'm like you got zombies chasing you. you, you got like certain flashlights that like kind of freeze them for a little bit, and then you're just hauling ass to a safe house, just like ah, I really, you really feel like you're there. At least I do. I'm just yeah. like oh shit, like this is getting intense, and you have to you know uh, kind of like Breath of the Wild manage your weapons because they do break, and you can mm-hmm. only repair them a finite amount of times, like usually three or four or whatever. And so it's 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 really like a survival game. I find myself scavenging. I really like the scavenging type games, open world where you like can go into random buildings and find stuff like the trinkets that you put together and craft like better stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Dying Light, I'm really enjoying it. If I out of the five, if I had to rate it out of the five scale that you just made, I would yep. say this one's a, a four point six six. <laughs> Six. Um, it's the highest rating Dying Light's ever gotten. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, honestly, I'm really loving. It. I don't care what anybody else says. Hey, about yeah, it. exactly. That's that's because that it's uh, it's 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 engaging, and I've been at the edge. Say three point seven five. You got it. You got it, bud. <laughs> Uh, now definitely that night mode just got me shitting my pants and shit. And uh, if if anybody has a uh, extra money or it's on sale, I would check it out on Switch. It's, the gameplay is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, and honestly, I don't think the graphics look too bad. But then again, I know you guys are always like uh, on the console. It's like a thousand times yeah. better. My neck hurts so much when I say all that. Yeah, <laughs> I just keep shaking it back and forth. It's like it's um, hard. It's hard to keep it up. I don't care much about graphics. So it's, it's I'm not, not a big, big graphics guy, but it's yeah. just like a lot of games. Just it's not even so much about the way they look. It's 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 the gameplay in general, and I don't know. It's it's the the frame rate, like the maintaining the frame rate. Not even that. It's, it's yeah. I mean, that could be part of it, but even the controller on the Switch is just like it's definitely not on par as a regular handheld. Um, like. 
Xbox or PlayStation controller. I can see that. But I don't. Like, I don't like the Joy-Con. I, I bought a actual controller, and that's I never bought that. I never. I'm like the only oh, person yeah. in the world that oh, never got. Oh, can I see the, that? By the way, I want to see what that looks like. Do you have? It's it the Pro controller. It's in my bag. It just okay. looks like a regular controller. He said, "Go fuck yourself, as well." Okay. <laughs> oh, I thought it's like a control, like a different type of controller that the screen sits in. But you just like what you just like put the stand oh, on and play with the controller. Uh, no, I mean, instead of using, like, the Joy-Con, like, this thing, mm-hmm. you could, could just connect the regular, like, remote. Like, Nintendo okay, makes so, a separate so, controller. So do you play on the TV? Yeah. Okay. No, that's what I was asking. I, mm-hmm. I, I, was, I was asking if, you, if the controller was, like, for the portable option or is it just, like, a controller that you play on the TV with? Does that's it work for the portable see. option? What is I, portable I feel like there's a control instead there's of like playing your switch Joy-Con. on the TV, you just put your switch down and then you take that controller and play. You could do that. You can't do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's no, just no, the it's, it's just a regular yeah. controller. Wherever you put it, it's gonna, it, it's it just gonna... syncs up with the switch. That's what yeah. I meant. What do you yeah. mean, Aslan? No, the other thing I was talking about was like I feel like there's like other like different Joy Cons, but like they they're like bigger and like like a controller that oh, you can either oh, do yeah, it or like, put the screen in and that's what i thought he had i got you they have that's oh i've seen those were like more like of like a grip groups, like an yeah. ergonomic yeah. grip type yeah. thing yeah. no yeah I don't, I don't have that i just either play on the dock or a regular joy con like portable okay. mode yeah okay um right. you play anything uh, else or no yeah dying light i'm currently stuck on that album i'm just I'm, I'm enjoying it the story is like okay it's nothing crazy but the gameplay is where it's like you really shine uh you know as you progress there's like three well i have three talent trees there's a fourth one called legend or something i haven't unlocked it yet but mm-hmm. they they they're like a stealth one there's a survivor and a power they, they unlock extra moves so as I get stronger, I'm unlocking like a bunch of like drop kicks. Like I could just run into a, like a pack of zombies and drop kick. It was it's pretty fun. Uh, I'm enjoying it. Uh, nice. Dying light. So uh, yep, those that that was my week mm. in games. Very cool. Um, Eslam, what would you rate? Because I, I'm making this a thing now. What would you rate Horizon Zero Dawn? Horizon Zero Dawn. <laughs> not scale. Out of five. Three point seven five. Three point seven five. I don't know. I'm I'm enjoying it for mm. what it is. It's a good um, game. Obviously, yeah. like. Story wise, it's not on par with like Mass Effect or like Last mm-hmm. of Us and like stuff like that. Um, but gameplay wise, I I really enjoyed the gameplay. I enjoyed the world that they built. Um, I would give it a a four, okay. four out of five. Yeah, so yeah. <clears throat> yeah. I probably you, you don't want to take it, honestly, take advantage of those decimals. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, I think it deserves a four. Yeah. Um, and and I'm experiencing all this for like the first time too, so yeah. uh, I'm 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 enjoying it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> now, how about um, you? What you been playing? So for me, um, I I I jumped back into Cyberpunk 2077 for a bit. Um, <laughs> quickly, I would say that's a 2.75. Quickly jump back out. That uh, that's one point seven five. Two point seven five is solid. Two point seven five solid. You sure it's yeah. not one point seven five? No, no. It's it, that's the thing. It's I enjoy the world. Um, I, you like that picture you sent us? <laughs> Oh my god, that's right. I forgot. I sent you that. So that's the thing that like everybody knew it was in the game. Like it, apparently when the before the game first came out and uh like certain people in the industry they got like demos for it. Mm-hmm. Um there was they had to patch uh, out a certain thing because there was like way too many dildos all over the world. <laughs> so like when people were giving their reviews like it's you know, it's not bad. It's a little janky and everything, but there's there's a whole lot of dildos like everywhere you go. I'm just picking up dildos. <laughs> <laughs> So um, when the game finally did release, they they kind of patched some of them out, so they're not that many. That's probably what fucked up the game so much. <laughs> they had so to patch many. out all the dildos. <laughs> they should have just left them there. It's what that was the balance that was needed to make that game better. Yeah. So in the picture I sent you guys in the chat, that's one of the main missions. Those aren't the pickup. I thought dildos. Are you, I, I thought you were gonna be like that's one of the main dildos. <laughs> <laughs> But, it's uh, the one dildo to rule them all. It was a baby <laughs> bastard too. That's how I was like, yo, the person that coded that. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's funny because it's like I, I did that mission the last time I played, and I forgot about it because it was just it was like a forgettable mission. So I play, I did it again this time, and the whole thing is you have to go in there to find some doctor, and you're trying to interrogate <laughs> him. And then it's just like I always look around the room see if there's anything I could pick up. And then I was like, oh, here's the bathroom. I open it up, and that was in the shower. Or is he a like, love doctor? Is he a love doctor? No, he was just a doctor. He was just. I think he was. I don't think he was a dildos. Doc. I, I forgot what it is. He does like augmentations and does like cyber stuff to people. I think. And uh, yeah, I go into the bathroom and it's just like, 
there was like five dildos and I, I just love how there was like the different sizes and at the end there was like a fist just <laughs> <laughs> Jesus <laughs> but um yeah so I played that for a little bit and I jumped back out that game I think I could just do every once in a while just jump in for a bit and then go back out yeah. before I get too frustrated so I did that and then because everybody's talking about Elden Ring this and Elden Ring that I was like you know what let me go back and play a game that they've made before that I own that I never messed with Bloodborne okay so I jump in, I play Bloodborne, and I was like, all right, this is going to be hard, this is going to be annoying. I go in there, and I'm whooping everyone's ass. And I was like, I didn't think I was going to have this easy yeah. of a time doing it. So I'm doing that, and then I get to one of the early bosses, and he kills me. I was like, all right, expected. Then I go back, and the thing is, they take you, they send you back to the last place like where you save the game. So, Eslam, yeah. think of it like um, Jedi Fallen Order, where you do those like little meditation things. Yeah. So it's like they take you back there, and then everybody's resurrected, and you have to run through them all again. Again, yeah, okay. So they sent me back to one that was really early in the stage. I was like, all right, I got to go through all this again. So I go through, I beat everybody again. I beat that boss, progress a little bit further, do some more stuff. I get killed again. Okay. Then they send me all the way back to that beginning thing again. Oh, shit. I was like, You didn't okay. save again? You, you can't save. You have to save at those things, and I never found another oh, one. Oh, shit. Shit. So then I was just like, so I have to oh. do all of that again. When that happens, I just turn it off and I'm like, I'm done. Mm -hmm. that, I gave it, it. Never, never go back. I gave it one more shot and mm -hmm. I made it far again. And the whole time I was just like, I should have found one by now. I probably made a wrong turn and there should have been another one because I'm getting way too far yeah. to then have to do all this again. So it happened again. I was like, I literally turned it off, uninstalled the game. It's not even on my PlayStation anymore. Damn. I was like, yeah, I can't do this. And the thing that sucks. No, usually I'm just like, fuck it. I'll, I'll just go through this again next time. But, like, I just can't do it right now. Yeah. I'm just like, I'm, yeah. And that's the thing. That's th This game is that. It's it's to make you go through it. Like, that's the point of the game. Elder, uh, Elder Scrolls. Elden Ring is kind of like that, too. But supposedly Elden Ring, they have saves closer to the bosses. So you don't have to go so far. Oh, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, but so I, I did that, and I was upset. But the killer was, and you could ask Henry because he was there while I was doing it, I created one of the greatest characters I've ever made in video games. His name is Roosevelt Powerbottom, and he... <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. I made the most <clears throat> deformed-looking thing in this world. And I was like, everybody looks weird in, in, um, in Bloodborne. Nobody looked worse than Roosevelt Powerbottom. And it was great. He had like this weird purple hair. No, it was it was like a reddish hair. He had a purple unibrow, and then he had like this weird like facial hair. I gave him the biggest cheeks that you could literally see him from the back. And I don't mean his, his you know, I could see, like you could look at the back of his head and his cheeks stick out from his face. Damn. Um, <clears throat> you had one piece on his. Ass. He didn't have a chin. I completely eliminated the chin. Just some big lips, and I gave this man okay. just a little head, a huge body, short arms, and some long legs. And it was it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Okay. Roosevelt power bottom. You um, know, uh, bottom is like a gay term. It I know. He, he takes it in the butt. No, no, he's a power bottom though. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so he, he takes it really good in the butt. No, no, no. He he gives it really hard from the bottom. That's what it means. Because he's a power bottom. But that's not what a bottom. No, power do. bottom. I think is the one that takes it. Bottoms yes, take unless it. you're a power bottom. I'm pretty sure. Uh, Okay. <laughs> I don't know. You're doing pretty good on Loodle, so you know better. Oh, dude, you saw that one try? Yeah, that was ridiculous. I what was, what so was the word? Please tell me. I, I got to know. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> you went, you went too. Because I'm thinking it's a six letter word. I was just like, I can't think of anything. Like, the only thing I could think of is pre -com. That was it. <laughs> that was Damn. it. I can't Perfection. think of another one. Perfection. <laughs> Damn. I almost stopped good playing. Shit. I was like, I should just end it right here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness! Um, one, one and done. Yeah, and I did play one more game, um, Tunic, which came out today. Nice. Um, oh, I jumped on that, dude. It's not a bad game. Um, nice, nice. It's not a bad game. And you don't like Zelda too, so dude. And that's the thing. It's <laughs> they took two games that I don't enjoy and made a good game. They took yeah. basically Dark Souls mm -hmm. and Zelda. Yeah. And they combine. I was like, "Dude, this is just, it I, works." I forgot his name. The uh, from kind of funny, the Spanish heartthrob. I don't remember Hispanic his, heartthrob, uh, Andy Cortez. His, Hispanic heartthrob. Okay, um, he was talking about it. And he was saying that he was like, "It's it's a if it's like a fusion of Zelda uh, meets like Souls games." Wait, is that Elden Ring? And then yeah, it, it is. And, like that's yeah, the crazy thing. It is Elden Ring, but and I don't use this word often. 
this is the cutest fucking game I've ever seen. Yeah. Like, you go out there, you <laughs> see the little fox, he's running, and then when he runs harder, he has, like, this little tuft of hair that you see it floating back, and he's climbing up ladders, his tail's going back. I'm like, this is shit cute. This is some cute <laughs> shit. <laughs> but, dude, the, nice. the level design is so good. It's, like, it's literally, like, old-school Zelda. It's, to me, it's not Breath nice. of the Wild, but it's the original Legend of Zelda, which I don't like either. But the game starts, you wake up, and you go. They don't explain yes. anything. There isn't English. There's a language that you can't read. So it's like you find signs, and it's just like it says stuff. You're like, okay. And the cool thing is as you Oh, it go, doesn't translate it. No. So as you play the game, <laughs> you find these weird little, like, lights that are just floating there. And then you select it, and that starts unlocking the the guide on how to play the game. And it's in oh, their language with a little bit of English. So basically, to learn how to play all the different things in the game, you have to play the game. So as you're progressing through, you're like, okay, oh, I can get a shield at some point because I'm playing it and I just have this stick. I'm like, press this button to use your shield. I'm like, I don't have a shield, but I know there's a shield out there. So that's my objective now. I want to try to find the yeah. shield. On my way to get the shield, I found out that there was a sword. I was like, okay, so I'm changing the way I'm fighting. And it's like Souls games where it's just like, you can't just go in there gung-ho. You have to like go in there, try to be smart about the way you're fighting. Yeah. And the one really cool thing that they do with their game design, so they have that same thing where you meditate and you come back to life and then everybody else comes back to life with you. So they have one in the first map of the game. It's right in the center of the world, of the first part. And you keep on going from there. And then every time you go to do a different thing, like you want to go to the right to find the shield. You go off to the right, you find the shield, you do what you have to do, and then you come back. And then because you have the shield or you found something, you learn that now there's a quicker way to get to where you just were. Yeah. So it's the same thing that happened with Bloodborne, where it kept on making me go all the way back. It kept on it keep, Tunic sends me all the way back to the same place, okay. but then once you do your objective, it shows you, we sent you all the way back here, but now you unlocked a shortcut. Yeah. So yeah. it's like every time you go, Kinda it's just like... like um... Like a fast uh, travel or no, no, no kind of no. like um, the maps in um, uh, the Star Wars game, Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah, like once you go through it, now there's a shortcut to get back yep. to where you were. But the see, but then there you get the good thing with this game with, uh, with Jedi Fallen Order is like you use it to go back. But if you want to go yeah. back to the place, you have to go through all that again. Yeah, yeah. yeah with okay. Tunic, it's just like like at one point I did this whole thing where it's like I finally got the sword, I got the shield, I'm running through, I'm fighting all these enemies, and I'm coming really close to dying. And then I literally just get to this one point where it's like there's people shooting crap at me. I'm like, I'm about to die. And I find this bridge. I push the bridge. I die. I respawn at that save point. I take two steps and I see the bridge. So I just went in one circle. Nice. And instead of having to do all that again, I could just walk on that bridge now. And I was like, that Very is cool. genius level design. Yeah. Like, that was like, it was blowing my mind. The music is great in this game. The game looks cool. And then the little instructions, like the, like the game guide on how to play, whatever, when you unlock it. It's the greatest looking thing because it's like it looks like it's hand drawn, and then it's just the way it's teaching you how to play the game is so good. It's like it teaches you how to dash. At one point, it teaches you how to run. I didn't even know you could run in this game, and not using English, it taught me how to do it, and I understood it. That's yeah. how good the game design is. So I mean, this great. is a really, really good game. Let's fucking go ninety points. Let's do it. Honestly, Let's get there. Honestly, I think it deserves it. <laughs> Come on, guys. Come on. Give me that 90 points. Um, now, with that being said, am I going to stay with this game? I don't know. Um, the way I am with games, I fall off of things very quickly. But as of right now, I'm enjoying it. I started playing like at 6 o'clock, and I didn't stop playing until it was time to jump on this podcast. Damn. Well, at 6 in the morning or 6 No, no, 6 p.m., 6 p.m. Okay. I was <laughs> say, that's a long time. No, no. Um, I mean, that's always like a good sign. That what hmm. happened? That's always a good sign. Yeah, that's how I've been with Dying Light. I just yeah. can't stop. Put I can't put it down. I'm just like, yeah. But Tunic, as of right now, I give that a four point five. Ooh, oh, shit. four point five. That's, out that's five. pretty good. Good shit. Good shit. Yep. yep. Yeah. And Bloodborne's I'll give, getting. I'll a, give it a five. <laughs> I'll give it a five. <laughs> <laughs> I, I Bloodborne think is gonna get a two out of me. Four point seven five. Okay. 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 Yeah. I dig it. I dig it. Let's 4. go. 5. Ninety points. Come on. Come on, critics. Let's go pump up those numbers. Those are rookie numbers. Yeah. Oh, and also, uh, it's on Game Pass. You guys have Xbox? Oh, that's awesome. Hop right on. That, that's how I play it. It's just on Game Pass. Okay. So, Sweet. Yeah, I'm going to jump on Game Pass and play it. Oh, fuck. Check it. Not I started playing soon. Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. That's also yeah, on Game that? Pass. Uh, good how game. How is that? It's, it's good. It reminds me a little bit of Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, you control Star-Lord. Turn-based? Turn 
No, it's you control Star Lord in the fights, and then you direct the rest of the Guardians on what to do. Um, it's it's it, the fighting is probably the thing I like the least, but that's usually the case for me in games. I prefer just dialogue and talking the whole time. Um, and the dialogue is funny. Um, as it's Guardians, the, it's yeah. what you think it was, and it's not. It does. You know how Guardians of the Galaxy has like the best soundtrack ever. Um. This game has the best soundtrack ever, but it's based on 80s music as opposed to older music, like the movies nice. are. So as soon as I turn it on, the first thing I hear is, um, uh, the, the, what's the Rick Roll song? I can't remember it now. Oh, uh, no Never Gonna to Love. Yeah, Never Gonna Give You Up. Give You Up, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. so that started playing. I was like, all right, I'm already liking it. And then after nice. that was just like, um, I think it was like, we're not going to take it. Then after that nice. was White Wedding, and I was like, oh, fuck. Like, this game's got oh. me. Like, it has the best soundtrack ever. And it's, it's uh, James it's Gunn fun. just does great with soundtracks. I mean, he did the same thing with Peacemaker. Yeah. yeah. Um, but um, he, definitely, he if, you get a, music. Yeah. if you get a chance, check out um, Guardians of the Galaxy. It's it's fun. I'm having a good time. There's a lot of turned on my Xbox since I started, um, since I finished uh, Mass Effect mm-hmm. and started uh, Horizon. But yeah. I, I'll turn on my Xbox just so I can download um, Tunic. Yeah. Um, so well, that's the thing. I, I played. Uh, I played <laughs> Cyberpunk. I played Bloodborne, and that made me turn off my PlayStation. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> um, that's why I'm on my Xbox. <laughs> all right. All right. Yeah. Probably gonna have to update that Xbox <laughs> when yeah, you turn me, it on. Yeah. I yeah. probably will have yeah. to. I, I usually just turn it on at least once every two weeks just to make sure I don't have to deal with that update situation. Oh, that makes a lot of good. That's uh, that's good advice i'll yeah. have to do that maybe i'll do that tonight just yeah. turn it on go to sleep yeah. guardians of the galaxy is getting a three out of me three a three okay okay that's a decent yeah exactly you know well, past the early. time might get, better. might get better past the time type game mm-hmm. i'll give it a 3.25 appreciate it yeah uh, I, th- I think it's a 3.2 yeah okay. you guys have never even seen the game but no that's cool yeah. <laughs> I- i'm giving it a 3.25 just because of the music you know what i'm saying that's such good music yeah it, ne- so. it needs less star lord yeah um, <laughs> all right uh let's jump into some news um i'll go first i got some quick uh entertainment news mm-hmm. hbo max uh so so the warner brother and discovery merger has been approved by congress and it's going to move forward so what that means for the streaming services we're gonna have to pay less and that's because hbo max and discovery plus are going to merge will be officially combined into one platform so we're going to get all that content under one platform for one price so that's does, great does discovery that's what like uh, discovery channel like what else uh... no discovery plus is something else okay. um, i forgot exactly what they own but um but yeah hey it's more content yeah. and hbo max is uh it's throwing up a lot of new shows that look good. Uh, I'm interested to see that basketball one about the Lakers in the 70s yes, uh, with Magic yes, Johnson. Yes. I want to watch that one. Um, that shit looks good. Um, a new rumor for Star Wars Andor is out, uh, indicating that it might be releasing on Disney Plus this August. Hmm. So let's see what happens with okay. that. Okay. And we'll cast um, Andor. Some more uh, Disney Plus news. Darth Maul was apparently written out of Obi-Wan Kenobi being replaced by Darth Vader. Um, Interesting choice. Uh, Maybe we'll get to see Maul later on in the series if it continues past season one. Well, it's Uh, just a mini-series. Most likely will happen. (laughs) Oh, is it a mini-series? So, yeah, if if it's very popular and people enjoy it and they want to continue it, maybe we'll get a little bit of uh, Kenobi and Maul. Yeah. Um... Samuel L. Jackson is ready to return as Mace Windu, and I'm super excited. Hopefully it happens. Um, He has said that um, there's a huge history of people with one hand returning into Star Wars. Uh, I'll learn uh, the lightsaber left-handed. Samuel Jackson on returning as Mace Windu. So, hey, let's go. His lightsaber does say bad motherfucker on it. So (laughs) That is awesome. I bet it does. No, it Um, legit does. Like, they made that for him. (laughs) <laughs> uh there's apparently uh I, I guess it's in about to begin production but daredevil reboot for disney plus is report reportedly about to begin production hmm. um this is interesting because when when those shows like daredevil uh iron fist like all those netflix 
Marvel mm-hmm. shows when they moved on to Disney Plus, some of the parents were angry and were complaining because it's on Disney Plus. I'm just like you could have just put it on Hulu because Hulu has the more it's still under Disney, but it has the more um like adult stuff where Disney Plus is seen as like kiddie shows or like PG thirteen or whatnot. And I think these shows are all PG thirteen. Uh I don't know why parents were about it but like daredevil was a a little dark but not too dark so i don't know how they're going to change it for disney plus but i did really enjoy the daredevil show uh i thought it was great so hopefully it's it's good um and then netflix is is thinking about charging more uh to share your password so i think if you have people outside of your household uh signing on to your netflix account i don't know I think they might be doing it by IP address. Uh, so if anything like that, they'll ask you to pay more. Or they'll just make another subscription for like, you know, that's more expensive where you can opt into for, for sharing your password. Mm-hmm. Last but not least, Amazon buys MGM Studios for $8.5 billion. I'm sorry, so, what? What? Yes, 8. sir. $8.5 billion. Holy cow. MGM. Amazon- MGM Studios. So wow. Amazon is about to get a lot more content, and they're going to start producing even more original content with MGM Studios. So it's about to get lit. They own Rocky, I think. No, I think they yeah. own Rocky. So it's we about... might get to see the Rockies um, on an Amazon Prime Video. We get a Rocky um, TV show. The <laughs> Rocko. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they bought them and. Uh, the deal, uh, so I guess there was a lawsuit. So now, uh, Amazon has officially closed its deal to acquire MGM after a regulatory lawsuit de- deadline expired. So I guess they were trying to stop them from buying it for monopoly reasons this is the only thing I could think of. But if they just approved Discovery and um, and Thanks Warner man. Brothers yeah. uh, merger, then this shouldn't be in anything all these companies are just buying up studios so they can have original content. Yeah. Um, it's it's just gotten to that. So we'll see what happens. But that is all my news. And uh, who wants to go next? Uh, I'll go next. Okay. <clears throat> go. Uh, d- uh, some Deadpool news. Uh, Deadpool will be directed by Free Guys, Sean Levy. Levy? Did I say it? Yeah, yeah. Levy. Levy. Mm-hmm. Uh I thought Free Guy was pretty good, so uh, mm. hopefully I just hopefully. saw it. So yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, no, I I was not interested in that movie at all. Yeah. I did <laughs> see his other movie, uh, The Adam Project, but that's besides the point. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that was him too. Yeah, uh, well, no, not the director, but um, Ryan Reynolds. Oh, 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 okay. I don't yeah, even yeah, know yeah. what that is. It's a time travel it's, movie. It's, it's, had yeah, to watch some it. Netflix movie. It was pretty good, actually. Mm-hmm. I mean, I I thought for what they did, it was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. The dynamic between uh, you know him and the kid and, was hilarious. Yeah, I gave it yeah. up to the kid. That I think that's yeah. what what gave me points for it because he he was such a good actor, a little young man. <laughs> but um, so that's Deadpool news. Uh, next up, I saw some Umbrella Academy three stuff. They're releasing yep, yep, yep. June twenty second, twenty twenty two. Season uh, so, three, baby. Season three. Uh, I'm really. I've been enjoying this series. I uh, I always think they, they I like the characters and uh, I'm curious where they go with it. You know, again that uh, number five, awesome actor. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I tried reading the comic. I, I couldn't couldn't get into yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, Chris gave me one of the graphic novels as a gift. I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know. The show has just like a whole different energy. I feel like uh, so. Mm-hmm. I'm curious to see what they do, where they take it, and uh, I'm excited for that. A nice uh, summertime show. Uh, last off, uh, the boys star Karen Fukuhara was attacked uh, in a hate crime, and uh, I just bring this up because I actually enjoyed the boys, and it was like she was the Asian woman with the powers. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, and the, the one her, that couldn't speak. Uh, spoilers and yeah she has her own little sign language her brother died uh so i i I just i hate this asian crime man i feel like they're getting so much for no reason and like uh she especially didn't deserve that uh 
uh, regardless of the show and me liking her, I just you know it, it just sucks to see people existing and, and people just hating for no reason and and physically getting hurt. So he was walking out of a restaurant or something or a cafe or something, and uh, she said that there's no like eye contact or no nothing funny. So somebody just came out of nowhere, just hit her on the head and just like ran off. And uh, wow, it's uh it's kind of like what happened to you, Islam. Like uh, oh yeah. <laughs> Except in high school. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you know, it it sucks to see it. And uh, I hope I hope uh, I hope this Asian hate goes away. I feel like COVID didn't help. But uh, well, COVID is what started it. Yeah. yeah. It's it's just senseless to attack Asian people just for being Asian. It's it's not Mm -hmm. like they had anything to do with COVID. Like it's uh, it's it's senseless, man. Mm -hmm. And I just want to bring that up because. I love Asian community. <laughs> you know, I love, I love like all their culture and all the yeah. stuff they bring into my life. So Absolutely. it just sucks. It sucks to see the, well, it's it like sucks that with to see every thing. Like there, I just, the, the idea of just hating anyone because they're from a specific place. That just makes no fucking sense to me, but no, there's weird people out there. People just like to hate. Yeah. And, Damn uh, right. and that's it for my news. All right. Cool, cool. Um, so I'm going to start off uh, wrestling uh, with some sad news. Um, you guys, I'm sure, have heard uh, Scott Hall, um, also known as Razor Ramon, has passed away. Um, so this one really sucked. Um, I know I say that a lot. Uh, Razor Ramon was – he's been there for as long as I can remember. You know, like me growing up as a wrestling fan – I can't imagine the, there being a time in my life where I didn't know about the character of Razor Ramon. Like, uh, he was always there. He was always, um, like, the coolest guy. He's literally Tony Montana from Scarface turned into a wrestler. Like, literally, that's their idea for Razor Ramon. Um, and Scott Hall was a phenomenal wrestler. And if you look at it, he's, he's a part of just about every major moment in, like, wrestling history where it was like um the first ever wwe ladder match uh intercontinental match between Shawn michaels and him at wrestlemania 10 he was there um the madison square garden um click that i can't remember what it's called right now where people saw the behind the scenes oh good guys are friends with bad guys he was there um the jump ship to wcw and formed the nwo he was the first guy to do that he was the first member of the outsiders to become part of the nwo um, he fought against Stone Cold Steve Austin at WrestleMania when they came back to WWE. Like, Scott Hall was always there. The man was badass. And uh, it's sad to see him go. It was a tragedy. The man went in for uh, hip surgery. There were complications. Oh, wow. uh, I read somewhere that he had, like, three heart attacks. Wow. Um, he was on life support, and then they uh, waited for his family uh, to show up to then, you know, take him off life support. And then finally uh, he passed away. Passed. Wow. But uh, uh that yeah, is no. so crazy. Yeah, it's it sucks. Um so, you know, uh obviously my condolences to all family and friends of Scott Hall and everyone affected by this. Uh but it was, it was nice to see the community as a whole like you know, pay their respects to uh a true legend in the wrestling industry. Without him, wrestling would not be the way it is now. Um Man so, was an icon, really. Like, oh, yeah, you absolutely. see you see a toothpick and it's just like it's, you know who you, you know who it is, yeah. Um, so there's that. Uh, then I got more. Hey, Disco, mm-hmm. uh, can you just like I like mute yourself when you're doing that? Sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, so there's more sad wrestling news. Um, Big E, who I've talked about uh, on the podcast before, um, Big Meaty Men Slapping Meat, um, one third of the New Day. Uh, he just recently broke his neck in the middle of a wrestling match on SmackDown. Um. Whoa. So Holy it, shit. yeah, it it's it was bad. Uh, he landed literally on the top of his head uh, yeah. while somebody was doing an overhead belly to belly suplex. So he, uh, they put him on a stretcher as he was carrying out. He gave the thumbs up. Um, then he saw how people were like freaking out online uh, on social media, on Twitter and Instagram and stuff. And he, in a freaking neck brace, goes online. He's just like, I'm good, guys. It's late. Go get some sleep. Oh, thank God he didn't have any dam- permanent damage. Yeah. 
like yeah. nerve damage that he still can move. Yeah, no, I mean, well, that's well, he was on the stretcher when he was saying this, but yeah, no, he's 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 okay. I mean, granted, he broke his neck, but yeah, yeah, he said that he told people to like relax. the first thing that went, came to my mind I was like, holy shit, he's paralyzed. Obviously, yeah. Yeah, um, I was just and like, oh neck my God. injury just never sounds good. <laughs> and the crazy thing is, in the wrestling world, so many people have literally broken their necks. Like, I'm, I think Benoit broke his neck. I know Austin broke his neck. Um, Kurt Angle broke his neck like three fucking times. Uh, like, so many of these guys, Edge broke his neck like twice. Like, and the thing is, uh, these guys they keep going. It's just like it blows yeah. my mind. They they break it in, for lack of a better term, the right way. And, yeah. you know, they're able to keep going. But anyway, he, he told people to relax. The next day he came on Twitter and he said that he broke two vertebrae. I forgot which one it was, but it was the C1 and it might have been like the C6. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, he said luckily he can move all his limbs. He does not need surgery. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, so I'm saying, like, he broke his neck in the best way possible. <laughs> and just <laughs> well, today. Thank God, man. Yeah. yeah. Just today, he he put up another <laughs> video of him in a neck brace walking around. He's like, I'm walking around. I'm at home. It's hot. Um, I'm, I got my shirt open. I'm showing all the taco meat. That's why I call my chest hair the taco meat. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> so this this man, uh, E, is just um, uh, he's definitely one of my favorites in wrestling. So uh, it's good to see that it's not that bad. Um, hopefully yeah. he can get back in the ring, but even if he can't, the man's had one hell of a career. He will definitely go in the WWE Hall of Fame. Um, nice. he deserves so. Uh, and yeah, so that happened, but at least he's doing, you know, okay. Um, and one more, uh, wrestling news story. That's not sad. Uh, um, so AEW Dynamite happened yesterday. The main event was the women's championship match which um, they don't often do women championship matches wrestling. So whenever they do, you know it's going to be a fucking banger. Um, there nice. was a rematch between Britt Baker, DMD, who is legitimately a dentist. That's why they call her DMD. And wow. Thunder Rosa uh, in a cage Break match. Break your teeth and then fix them later. Yeah, her finisher, unless I'm mistaken, it's called the Lockjaw. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, nice. yeah, that's that's what she's, she literally says that too. She's like, I'll just fuck your mouth up and then I'll make you pay me to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> but um she's a badass anyway um adam cole baby's girlfriend uh so she was defending her title against thunder rosa in a cage match first ever AEW women's cage match it was a banger and uh thunder rosa finally does it after fighting Britt baker for i think the third or fourth time finally beats Britt baker and becomes the AEW uh world women's champion um nice. which was really cool because thunder rosa when she first came in the AEW, she wasn't even an AEW wrestler they had a partnership with nwa and she was their champion, and they couldn't afford to, like, keep her contract because of COVID or whatever. Tony Khan's like, she's amazing. I'll buy out her contract and just have her work for me. And she's become a star ever since. So yeah. seeing her win it is great. She came out with, like, it was like the – she's Mexican, right? So she came out – there was, like, mariachi and, like, old school, like, Mexican music and stuff like that. Just proud of her heritage. She's always, like, really proud of her heritage. It was, it was badass. So nice. seeing Thunder Rosa hold that title now, it's, it's, it's really cool. Britt Baker did amazing with it. She went as far as she could. So now it's it makes sense to pass it on to the next person and help push the division, push the brand. So um, it, it was it was, uh, it was a great match. Is, uh, is, is AEW, like, the next, like – would you say like WWE or whatever WWF? Currently, AEW is the best wrestling show in the world. Uh, <laughs> um, see, there, there, yeah, there's literally no other way to put it. I feel it. like they were like your whole news. Like AEW is popping. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's that's usually what I talk. About. It's that or I'm talking or I'm complaining about WWE. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's that or Vince McMahon fired some more people. Yeah. Um, as my, I mean, there is other stuff in the world. There's a New Japan Pro Wrestling tournament happening uh, right. It might have finished. I haven't been too close with it. It's not. It's not the G1. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, here we go with these fucking. Mm. It's not the G1. But um, haven't climaxed in a again. while. <laughs> they got stuff going on. They got some stuff going on. You got right now. There's a feud between uh, Jay White and Tama Tonga. Who's gonna be the leader of the Bullet Club? We don't know. Is Tonga Lo gonna follow Tama Tonga? I don't know. What is gonna happen with all the Tongans? But that's uh -huh. all another thing. Remember those names? I think he's just beatboxed. <laughs> it was a cool beatbox. That was a, that was a really nice beatbox. He said Tonga 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 Low. <laughs> but oh, yeah, oh my goodness, <laughs> that's that's my wrestling. Nice, nice. Uh, that was sick. Those Tonga Lowens. Um, <laughs> let's get it. I don't know why that felt racist. <laughs> <laughs> they sound like a. They They're sound Tongans. Like a They're, it's from a place called Tonga. The island of uh, Tonga. It's by Samoa. Oh, that's a real place? Yeah. 
Oh it's damn! Cool. Shit, I thought it was made up for wrestling. No, no, they okay. they don't they don't fuck with Samoans. Uh, um, they got yeah. There's Tamatanga, Tongaloa, Hikaleo, King Haku. That's their father. Okay, like, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Another. Okay. All right. My bad. I, I apologize to the to the Tongans. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did they, not they, know you were real. They would fuck you up, man. They, <laughs> and they hate Samoans. There's like a blood well, feud. <laughs> I'm not Samoan, Dang. but um. Okay, let's move on <laughs> to the main topic. <laughs> But, as always, before we continue, go check out the Los Wise Guys YouTube channel. Uh, we're putting on videos every week, uh, putting up clips every week. Go check out our social medias, putting up reels every week of our uh, favorite highlights of the episode. So go check those out. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share, rate, and review. Go tell your friends about this podcast and help us grow our audience. Now, let's jump into the main topic, which is the season finale of how i met your father um so the last time we talked about how i met your father was i think the episode about um sophie and her mom and uh so we moved on from that and a lot of relationship stuff happened in the show some some relationships ended uh a lot of relationships ended some relationships started some got stronger um (laughs) we had a uh a guest from How I Met Your Mother show up to the yeah. season oh, yeah. finale on that last episode. I was shocked. Yeah, both both a main character and side character showed up to that um, to that episode, which was really fun. I like the way they tied that yeah. in. Uh, so we can get into more details, mm-hmm. but uh, the the story was is progressing like, um, and thank God, like she broke up with Drew uh, because God damn, he was a boring fucking character. Uh, but yeah, so I can't wait for Sof- Drew to come back just to upset you guys. Like, <laughs> he will wait. come back, and and I'm he's gonna, gonna date upset. date someone else. Somewhere. I'm calling it. He's gonna come I'm back gonna be- as an insane wild person who's like he's on the edge of life. Like I I could see that would that be happening. funny. I could see that that happening. would be funny. It's like you know, ever since you left me, I I've, I've just been trying. I'm extreme now. <laughs> like I could just yeah. imagine that. <laughs> It's a whole he's new fuck- character. He's <laughs> fucking in a squirrel suit, just like coming down from the Empire State Building. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, but, that'd be yeah, sick. <laughs> but yeah, um so we had uh I think like the main things that happened with the show um like the relationship between Drew and um and so- Sophie kind of deteriorated because Drew didn't really support her dream of becoming a photographer. He told her he's like, "Hey, he, Drew's more of a realist. He's like, I think you need to get a uh, like a steady job a steady pay you're kind of too old now like you and she's like well i want to follow my dream and then with jesse jesse had the same um mindset. like mindset because drew had offered him uh the music teacher position jesse didn't want to take it because he wants to follow his dream of becoming a musician or a songwriter so they have that in common and that clicks with them other than like the um before they they kind of were into each other and then uh, nothing really happened, but then this kind of like push it over the edge, and they end up kissing. Um, and I'm talking more about like the last two episodes yeah. here because it, the yeah. two episodes in the middle from like the episode Stacy, which was with her mom, and then not much really happened. She um, found out her mom was like, yeah, <laughs> the problem. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we talked about we it talked last about time. That, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah, but so, the, so you I think learned like a, a lot things, of the meat. Like, I feel like the jobs were kind of a thing uh in some of the episodes like you see that sophie earned the opportunity to get a job working for a famous photographer so that's something that i think is going to come back um also and the the long distance chick is also getting that la job where where she'll be long distance for longer time yeah yeah Uh, so um what's her name Lori, i think uh yeah yeah. so she's gonna be uh she's still trying to do the long distance thing with sid um but you had that you got to see what else did we get to see um I mean, the other the chick's part, job right. where she like makes it look glam, but it's actually yeah, shitty. Like, yeah, and then she's trying yeah, to steal stuff from her boss. So I feel like they did a, they did some stuff to focus on like their jobs. And then you have um, what? What? what's his name, uh, the British guy Charlie. He's working for yeah. Sid, which is going to be an issue, I guarantee, yeah. at some point. <laughs> of course, has um, to. Yeah. One thing. One thing they did uh, on episode five I thought was funny was Slim Shady, the the little. Uh, yeah, we we yeah we talked about that last time where he oh, uh, did he yeah ah, that was the one remember okay. you said you didn't get a chance to watch it that week oh damn yeah okay yeah yeah so I actually liked what they did on that episode with yeah. Slim Shady when he killed him yeah and he's like Slim Shady please stand up I was actually <laughs> laughing at that <laughs> yeah one they one have some mm-hmm. go ahead 
No, go for it. I, I was just going to say they have some corny jokes that kind of hit. Yeah. Um, which is really good. But yeah. One one other job I want to talk about, and this was more in the last episode or last two, was uh, Helen's. Yes. Where she. Is it Helen or Ellen? It's I'm sorry, Ellen. it's Ellen. You're right, it's Ellen. 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 Um, where she goes and she applies for, what was it, Goliath something. And Goliath. I was like, Goliath. Goliath Produce. Yeah, yeah I like and that. And I was just like, yeah. that's Goliath National Bank. Okay, I, I, I see you. Like, they're associated yeah. with each other somehow. I'm like, that's the company that Barney tried to take down, or eventually did take down, I think. Yeah, at the end, yeah. So um, I like that callback. And you were talking about the two uh, characters at the end. There was also the two characters uh, right before that that were from the previous show, the captain and boats, boats, boats. Yeah, so that's what I was talking about. Well, I thought you were talking about the two after, the bartender and... Oh, I didn't count the bartender, but yes, bartender, the bartender was there from day one, man. Come on, you got. I know respect it, it was. He really true. was. I can't name him. I can't. None of us can. But <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because uh, spoilers. Robin said his name like six times. I know his name. Like I, as soon as they say, it, I'm like, oh, that's right. It's it's this guy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, so we had like uh, the captain and uh, his mis his wife who boats, boats, caught boats. him with his mistress. And then she's like, uh, and it's funny the way they tied that into oh, the that. ending of the season, which was perfect. But yeah, so Sophie and uh, ends up breaking up with Drew, and uh, and now Charlie and uh, Valentina, Valentina are having issues because <laughs> like Valentina hinted that she might want kids, and like Charlie's like, I don't want kids. Like my mother was like super mean. Like I don't want to turn into like a mean person because of kids. Yeah. And so both they dead break set up on that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he's so not, they... he's not trying to change his mind. Yeah. Same with yeah. her. She's not trying to change her mind either. Yeah. She wants kids. Exactly. Um, That's so an they... important deal breaker. <laughs> Absolutely. It is. It is. Um, so that, so they end up breaking up because of that. And it's, and it's important to like have that conversation oh, absolutely. early on. Yeah. So, <laughs> So they end up uh, breaking up, and then Sophie broke up with uh, Drew to get with Jesse. And now they got together. They had a great night of, like, sex. And um, and then apparently Jesse – well, not apparently. Jesse says, like, I love you in his sleep. And then she freaks says, out. I love you, Sophie. He even, like, yeah. names yeah. her. <laughs> this is weird. Yeah, and so she freaks out and then, like, ends up running into uh, Robin Chabotsky and – talks to her and then robin's like don't run away from things just because you're scared mm -hmm. um like he didn't do anything wrong like he literally did everything you would want from a guy but he just did it quicker um so she ends up trying to go back and and like because she had a fight with jesse and uh she told him uh she got even more scared when he told her he gave up the tour uh where his girl because his ex came back mm -hmm. and was like hey come to tour with me i regret breaking up like we can work on it and he was like no i don't want to go i want to stay here because of sophie he didn't tell her that but he just said yeah. no he told sophie that he did that and she was like oh my god you can't do that just for me or blah 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 and then like after she has the talk with robin she goes back and uh she talks to him <laughs> and she doesn't talk to him she goes back and then she sees him with his ex and they're kissing and i guess they're gonna go on tour so she's kind of a little heartbroken and then she goes to her gallery, which ends up being the picture that she took of him with the car broken down um, that she entered. And, like, the photographer lady uh, said she would put it on her gallery and the ending. Right. So the reason why the captain was so important because his wife took his boats in the divorce. And one of those boats being a boat in Australia that was doing research for the reef. Mm -hmm. And it ended up being the same boat that I forgot his name. Ian. Ian, uh, <laughs> the guy that she went on like that Tinder date with that Episode they really one. clicked. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and he ends up coming back because she took the boats from the divorce and uh, she said she would sink him. So he had to come back because there's no boat for them to go out and do their research, which I thought was like genius mm -hmm. the way they tied that in together. Mm hmm. Um, I just wonder where in Robin's life are we seeing her right now? Is this when she's already with Ted? No, no. Because no, right? if you look, because remember when she got with Ted, they were much older. This right at this point, Ted's still married to I can't remember her name, his wife, and Robin's okay. off doing her because she said, "Oh, I have to meet so and so, like famous people." This is when uh -huh. she's still becoming like top newscaster of the world. Robin, she's okay. not there nice, yet. Nice. She's on her way. So she's okay. not in, as far as we know, she's not in a relationship with anyone. 
Okay. Yeah, cool. So so this is like um so now we kind of know where in the timeline of how I met your mother this is taking place. Yeah. Well, they said it, uh, which they, is like in the cool. beginning. They said it was. Uh, this is twenty. I think it was twenty twenty one. The show is in twenty twenty two. The show is set in twenty twenty two. Yeah, it's okay. in the future in twenty fifty, like when they yeah. jump. Yeah, and that's yeah. the thing. And how I met your mother. They kind of showed what happens throughout the years. Like they jumped around. They show when Barney finally decides he wants to be a good father, and like they they jump through history for at the finale of How I Met Your Mother. So it's like yeah. that's how I know like we're in between. Well, also like one thing how I met your mother. I don't know if they did this in the first season, but in like the later seasons, what they do is they would show you a big event, and then it would take the whole season to show you it's how it, yeah. how it got there. Um, so I wonder if they're going to do that in season two of How I Met Your Father. I think with um, that it was just because they they caught up to regular time and they needed to figure mm-hmm. out how to space oh, okay. out. Because <laughs> well, okay, yeah, that makes cause, sense. Cause, but yeah. No, go ahead. I guess how I met your your father kind of doesn't have to deal with that because they're in the current time, right? They're in mm-hmm. 2022, and by the next season comes out, it'll be 2023 or something like that. Yeah, it, d- um, it depends on what they, they're they going to do. Because the way I see it, I, I don't know if this is true, but I would assume that there has to be a time jump. Uh, oh, there for will season be, yeah, two, cause because it's not like we're going to have like 20 something seasons until we get to 2050 <laughs> yeah no but I, I, i'm just saying like i think that season two is going to probably st- the way i see it it's going to start after jesse's finished the tour and he comes back. oh that makes that's sense. what i'm thinking oh, is gonna that happen. that does sound like it would make sense oh yeah that, that does make sense yeah, yeah. so i think it's going to take place from there and is jesse in a relationship with his ex is have things yeah. gone horrible is sophie still trying to go after is sophie now dating ian this whole time like the, uh, there's so many things that could be happening uh, in that I think time. I because think they will Rob, do a time skip, but a time skip with flashbacks exactly. so you can see what happened in that time. Yeah. Rob, okay. Robin yeah. was also talking about how like you know timing can be a bitch sometimes, and yeah. like timing is everything, especially yeah. when it comes to romance. So maybe you know maybe a uh, timing, maybe they do come back together and find the right timing later, where it's just like oh, oh, they they're definitely good. Whatever, they're going to get together up. and break up like another three times. Like <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> there's still a couple more times yeah. in the works. Yeah. No, one Definitely. thing I was really hoping for was when Sophie was telling Robin the whole like, yeah, he said I love you in your sleep. I you don't know how bad I wish Robin would have said he pulled a Ted. Or just something along those lines. <laughs> yeah. Like, that would have been funny. <laughs> but um I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm enjoying the show uh very much. Uh like I said, I, I definitely enjoyed these last couple episodes. Yeah. Uh there were a lot more events happened. Mm-hmm. Um the, obviously the beginning was a lot of setup. Um so that makes sense, but now I feel like now we we know the characters a lot more uh we can kind of guess where it's gonna go um the next season is gonna be twice as long so we're gonna have twice as much shenanigans and um it's gonna be interesting to see the dynamic between uh charlie and um valentina if we're if they're gonna like if they're gonna be the couple that's like back and forth back and forth or is it like this is just over for them and they're just gonna find other people also ellen with the neighbor what's gonna happen with that is she gonna yes. become a bigger character in the show? Is you dude, know? I love Ellen so much. Yeah. She's like my favorite. She's, she's yeah, great. She's, she's great. She's she, awesome. she's so funny. Mm-hmm. She's so funny, and uh, I don't know. It's just like there's something about her that's like very enjoyable. Yeah. Her character. I, the, I'm the liking innocence. Sid a lot, actually. Sid, Sid is he's just a fucking goofball. It's great. Like, yeah, <laughs> you're, he, he's like you're not gonna bring back an apology, Kit Kat. <laughs> you're definitely new to relationships. I was, I, I was laughing at. That. Yeah. No, yeah, he's pretty I, funny. I like that that uh, promise handshake that him and Jesse did was funny, where they did the thumb promise. Oh yeah, because mm-hmm. the thumbs then, are like, stronger they, than pinkies. <laughs> yeah, then they like kiss the back of the hands. Uh, it was like seal it with a kiss. That was funny. Oh man. Um, oh, the whole uh, the whole. Uh, getting locked in and um fuck was the term that they used uh what do you mean get, well, like when they when were they finishing were, up when they were finishing up their work oh they so were they don't get, oh, it was something they were gonna pound it out or something like that yes there we go yes a pound session <laughs> yeah um and, and they were like that's <laughs> yeah. like that's not how you're supposed to use that because <laughs> we're gonna pound out the work guys yeah. like um <laughs> oh god no. but yeah they they're i i feel like they i I want to see, and again, this is only the first season, but things that I want to see a little bit more is the relationship between uh, Sid and Jesse. I want to see their friendship a little more. Uh, hopefully, we can get some flashbacks of them when they were back in the day. Mm-hmm. And I think in in the future, we're going to get that a little more. Um, we're like 
flashbacks between Sophie and Valentina, flashbacks between uh, Sid and uh, Jesse, and then maybe we'll get to see uh, Jesse and Ellen when they were like small kids. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, one, one thing I definitely want to see is it was like a throwaway line, and I want to see if they come back to it. I made it a point to remember it. Um, Halloween 2018. So there, yes, the, yeah. There's yes. the one point where it's like Jesse, not Jesse, uh, Sophie and Valentina. They're talking, and they're just like, "This is just like the, what happened." The drugs, yes, the drugs, yes, yes. They're like, like, "Yeah, it's like, like, yeah." This reminds me of Halloween 2018. It's like you never talk about Halloween 2018 or something. <laughs> like that. Yep. I was like, "Oh man, I need that flashback." <laughs> I, I was like, "I happened. can't wait for that." Yeah, I gotta wait for that callback. <laughs> Speaking of callbacks, I loved when the captain was talking about the one night when somebody stole his pineapple from his bedside. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> I was like, the pineapple's back. They brought it back <laughs> the pineapple somehow. Made it. I mean, there's so much of that. The McLaren's, the bar itself, yeah, the when McLaren's they go to the bar, yeah. I was like, oh, man, it's so good to see it again, you know, yeah. um, the setting. But um, I have uh, – well, I, I have a question. Season one is finished. Where do you guys stand on the whole who is the father situation? Now, that, I mean, do you think you know who the father is? Do you think you understand why Sophie is telling the story to her son yet? Like, I have some theories. I'm just curious to hear what you guys think. Honestly, I haven't. I'm not even. I don't even care about guessing because no? it's not about the father to me. It's about the journey. Yeah. It's and and well, not for nothing. That's why you didn't win Danny last time. You don't think about it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and and maybe I'll think about it later on. Mm-hmm. But and win Danny back. Uh, I think no. we should do that bet again. <laughs> I should be able to get a. I need something. To no, I, I need. Yeah, but you gotta give me a reason to put him on the line. What What am I gonna get if I win again? I already have giving rice to my firstborn. <laughs> I ain't cheap. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't cheap. <laughs> oh man. Um. But all right. I'll give you. I'll. I'll try to think of something. Um. Who do I think the father is going to be? I know the fuck is not going to be Drew. Yeah. Like, I don't care how much they think that, like, you, sure? you you are not fucking, like, doing that to me. You like, sure? if, if Drew's the father, like, fuck this show. Why does Drew be the son somehow? <laughs> 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 um, I don't know. I so, feel so like it's not the... not Drew or Jesse. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I really don't know who it could be. So, I so feel like Jesse was... would be too obvious. Mm-hmm. So they told us the father was there that night in the first episode, right? So it's Jesse, Ian, Charlie, uh, Sid. Sid. Um, so could Drew. it be Sid? Drew. Could it be Sid? Well, could be. Maybe they break up. I don't know how but... that relationship. That, sh- that relationship is going to break up. It might come back, but they're definitely breaking up at some point. Yeah, um, if I had to be, uh, if if I had to guess, it would be Jesse, or um, or Charlie. Mm-hmm. Um, if I had to guess, and and they're not showing him because <laughs> they don't want. Because if they show him and it's white, you're like it's not Ian, right? And if they show him and he's like mixed, it's it's Ian, mm-hmm. right? So they that's the reason why yeah, they're not smart showing that they're him. Not showing him. Also, they could just change the actor if need be. <laughs> Yeah, true. Um, so, it, it could be one of them. It, it could also be Ian. So th- those are like my top three guesses. I, I don't know how she would get into Charlie, um, but anything is possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it could be one of those three. I don't see it being I don't, Sid. I, I don't know. I think Valentina I would. Charlie. I feel like Valentina would have beef if if uh, she got like with her ex because they're like besties and girl code, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would make could, for a good it, show. It, it depends on how the story goes and if Valentina's okay with it. I mean, it happened a lot with, between Barney and Ted with Robin. Um, so it could. It, so Charlie could be the Robin where he's back and forth between <laughs> Valentina and um, and Sophie. But we'll see what happens. I feel um, it's definitely too early to tell. I can't. I can't put my finger yeah. down on it. I, I, I <laughs> What's your theories, Dad? So w- with who it is, it's that's the more difficult thing. Uh, I've mostly been focusing on why Sophie's telling okay. the story. Um, so I feel like one that's it's very similar to How I Met Your Mother um, is the whole she had a relationship, baby was born, yeah, things didn't work out, broke up with the father, yeah. Um, 
father now that her husband is out of the picture either divorced married something whatever she's lonely she's at home she's in the middle of the night drinking wine talking to her son yeah. reminiscing about her past maybe she's reminiscing about her one true love the father of yeah. her child and it could be the same thing where she's trying to get the kid's blessing like hey i know your father and i like we're not together but i was thinking maybe i should do this i figured would that be weird for you i mean maybe you'd be happy because your parents would be back together maybe it could be something along those lines um, uh-huh. so I figure that's like the <laughs> easiest go to route. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's just I like that's my thing. It's just like the whole like why would somebody tell why is she telling the, the story? The story. Yeah. You know, and that's uh that was my mindset with how I met your mother. Who like why would he tell the story to them and that's why at the last minute that's why I was just like, Oh, it's this, that, that and so I'm I'm just trying to think about it early on this time around. But um that's probably the one that makes the most sense. Um I've I've just been floating around just different ideas just trying to figure it out but that's that's definitely the one yeah that's it's a good theory um yeah man i i definitely enjoyed this show i was it's not that i was iffy about it in the beginning mm-hmm. i was just like i was not invested yet mm-hmm. into these characters and I, and i'm definitely invested a little more now i get to know them a little more and because it was only 10 episode season so that means it was only five hours right because it's a half hour show Right, um, where I feel like the the seasons for How I Met Your Mother was a lot longer because it was on network television, mm-hmm. so it was like a what like a twenty 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 yeah like, like twenty two episode seasons, yeah. so there was just a lot more to tell with like you had like slaps given you had like all this stuff that was built up through this large period of time, so now this next season we're gonna have twenty episodes, so that's you know. Uh, 10 hours uh, of stories uh, to tell, which I I think for this show works better that way Mm -hmm. to get a little bit more Um, uh, just because of it's not the type of show where kind of like uh, like if it's like a show like uh, the Peacemaker, if it if it's like longer than what it was it gets stupid but mm-hmm. for this type of show it, i feel like it needs to be a little longer well, sitcoms sitcoms in general it's, they work better when they go longer because it's a shorter amount yeah. of time if it's like a full length hour long show you're not trying to watch 20 something episodes of an hour long show yeah yeah you know um it's so got yeah, so, it's got like a slow burn feel to it like uh, you want you want it to last and you want it to uh uh, you you want more episodes so that you can get all the info and try to figure out that last mystery, like that yeah. the overall mystery. Yeah. Uh, so it makes me want more as opposed to like, yeah, like you're saying, like a show like Peacemaker or, or something like that where it, it needs that ending and that closure. If you keep going, it's just like well, you're going to waste your time. You have filler episodes. You have boring moments. And it's like. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, so final thoughts. What do you guys what do you guys have? Um, I mean, uh, I said it on here before this, this show, they got me from the first episode. Um, okay. with, with how I met your mother, it was, um, basically that show, it was kind of just like, I heard a few people tell me about it. Um, Eslam, you were one of them. We were just like, Hey, the show's real funny. You should check it out. Okay. I'll give it a shot. And then, uh, it got me, I was hooked and I was like, ah, oh, it's a funny sitcom. And by the time you get to the end of the show, it's like, you, you actually care about the story. You yeah. care about what's happening. Um, so it's like, it just started off as a regular show that was funny. And then it got to the point where it's like, I was fully invested in what was going on. And I, the big moments meant a lot, um, to me, um, uh, regardless of who was happy to, I loved all the characters and how much about it, even Ted, which is hard, but, um, <laughs> yeah. it was, you know, Sophie's way more likable oh, so much. Than, than Ted right so now, much. but she still has her stupid moments, but like, yeah, she's way more likable than Ted. But, um, yeah, no, so, I mean, they got me from the beginning, and um, I feel like I'm watching it almost differently uh, last time. Not because I'm trying to guess the big thing, but because last time it was just like I became a bigger fan of the show. This one is just like I'm here for the special moments day one. Like anything that's just like, oh, my God, I remember when this happened, blah, blah, blah. So it's like I'm I'm much more invested in this show now than I was during season one of How I Met Your Mother because of nice. How I Met Your Mother. But, yeah. Yeah. They got you looking for those Easter eggs. And yeah, those it's just like I can't, I can't wait to see what's going to happen. So I, I love that I don't know. I love that it's just going to be new inside jokes, new uh, Easter eggs. And no, I just can't wait. Can't wait to see where the show goes. Yeah. Uh, my final thoughts. I, uh, you know, I really didn't, really didn't have high hopes coming in. I, I, 
I don't know. I was kind of turned off by it at first a little, but you know, once you give it the time, they definitely grow on you. And by the end of the season, I, you know, I don't say I'm not gonna say I like I'm super in love, like head over heels, but it's definitely a show to keep on the radar. Definitely a show to keep on the background, if anything, because they definitely have a. There's there's some good moments, some worthwhile, funny moments in there, and relatable moments. Uh, uh, to life, you know, I'm in a long distance relationship, so I, I totally relate with Sid and, and whatnot. So, uh, you know, it's a uh, definitely worth the check out. Hopefully, hopefully they go in a good direction with it. But, you know, for what it was, I I I, I think it's worth a recommendation. Nice, three point uh, seven five. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it a uh, this one. I'll give a four point two five. You know what I'm saying? But. That's a good one. I, I'm I, feeling that four point two five actually. <laughs> uh, I really, I really enjoyed the show. I'm really looking forward to the season two because I, like Dan said, I, I want to see the new, the new moments that they create for the show. And they start a little bit with the Halloween 2018, and there's gonna be, just gonna be more. I'm looking forward to see maybe Charlie's family visits. Oh, I can't um, wait. I can't wait. Uh, which family. will be hilarious. Um, since he mentioned his mother and that duchess and like how they treat each other and like so i'm just like that's gonna probably be something in the future and um i can't wait to see the new characters that they introduce with like maybe charlie starts to date this new character um we have uh, valentina's obviously gonna probably start to date another character so i'm interested to see the people that they're gonna bring in and continue the story and uh yeah man i'm looking for I'm really looking forward to season two, so hopefully that comes out pretty quickly. Um, but other than that, thank you for listening to Los Wise Guys podcast. If you like what you hear, follow us on social media, like, subscribe, share, rate, review. Uh, don't forget to go check out the YouTube channel um, and go check out our social medias. Uh, links below. Uh, thank you for listening. Have a great week.